Well, it's time for the never-ending debate that never will go away. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Zach, and I am back with another vlog, and today we are going to talk about the reasons why I went to film school. Not the reasons you should go to film school, because everyone has their own reasons, but I want to talk about specifically why I decided to go. I think the debate of do you go, do you not go is ridiculous. It's a choice. You can go or you cannot go. Neither is going to prevent you from doing everything that you want to do. When you start thinking about it, there are obvious pros and cons to going, just as there are pros and cons to not going. So I'm going to start today by talking about the reasons why I went. And in another video, I'm going to talk about the reasons why I might not have gone. For a little bit of context, two years ago in 2016 at the Terminus Film Festival in Atlanta, good friends of mine run that from Ideas United, they're really fantastic human beings. They invited me to come and speak at a panel down in Atlanta on the debate. Do you go to film school or do you not go to film school? Anyway, on the one hand, yeah, like we can go back and forth and I can say like, ah, but you, but you learn things and someone else can say, yeah, but you can do that on your own. And, and I can say, yeah, but your work is going to get better. And someone else can say, yeah, but tuition, not every choice is best for every single person. For every one of my friends who went to film school, I have a friend who is out there kicking ass and killing it in their own world, having not gone. So these are five reasons why I decided to go to film school. Number one. I knew that I needed access. Like, I had a camera, I have stuff at home, but it was not, like, enough. Access to, to people, to, to like-minded human beings, to putting myself in a room with people who all thought creatively, artistically, from with a filmic language. I needed those kind of resources. Not just like expensive cameras and like fancy lenses and, and gear, because like you can get that anywhere. The 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 knowledge base, the thought processes, the let's all talk about what is directing that's way beyond more than just where do you put the camera and what do you have the actors doing. You know, there's so many things that I didn't know that I didn't know that I didn't actually get to know them until I just talked openly about these abstract con ab abstract constructs, ab abstract things, whatever. And at the same time, being in a room where 20 different people have 20 different ideas about how to tell a story, because that's the other important part uh, when I say access to resources. You're not only accessing the minds of like-minded thinkers, you're accessing the minds of totally not like-minded thinkers. A movie in Europe is, is not the same thing as a movie in South America, which is not the same thing as a movie in Asia, which is not the same thing as a movie in North America. You just learn so much by what that person is doing. I never would have thought of doing that. And not like a weird, awesome camera move, but like the subtleties of what they're doing, the story that they're telling. I didn't think that was a story that could be told. Number two, I like working best in in focused environments. We're, we're locking ourselves in and we're, we're concentrating on one thing. If I have no structure, if I don't have any fire lit under my ass, I'm never gonna get anything done. So I knew that if I got out of college and just got into the workforce and found a job, that I would never actually do any of the things that I wanted to do. I'm lazy. And, and I think that's half of what it comes down to is I am a lazy person and I procrastinate like no one else. So. I knew when I was deciding between film school or not film school, the idea that I'm gonna have to do this, I'm going to have to sit down and write that script, I'm gonna have to go down and shoot this movie, that was part of the beauty of it because I knew I would do it. Because the world is loud, the world is very in your face and flashy and it's always trying to distract you. I get distracted all the time. So being able to be in an environment where you, ha you don't have the time to be distracted is very beneficial uh, to me. Number three, I knew from the day that I was thinking, right, that I, from the day that I, I knew that I had an imagination, that I wanted to tell my own stories. I find that people who want to just work in the entertainment industry, work in television, work in movies, you don't need film school. Go get a job, start PAing somewhere, get in at the ground floor, work your way up from a, a PA to a coordinator to to a, a, an associate, to whatever, and just like get in the system, and then you're there, and then you're set. You can make a great career doing that, and I have the most utmost respect for people who do that. 
But if you want to be a screenwriter, if you want to be a director, if you want to be an above the line person, I think you need it. I think just like any other craft, you need the schooling. You just, you have to just go and like dig in and really develop who you are as a person. Unlike all the other fields in, in the world, there's no just set knowledge base. It's not like you're going to school for like a set of skills. There's no equation to being a screenwriter, but at the same time, you have to go and put in the reps and put in the hours and put in the work. If you go into the, the universe and just like PA in PA land, you're, you're gonna be a fantastic crew person. You're gonna work your way up and eventually be a producer on something. But if you wanna be a screenwriter, if you wanna be the creative force behind a project, the only way you're gonna do that is by doing it. And you're not gonna do it if you're working a job. And this is not to belittle PAing because I think it's a very valuable skill and it's something everyone should do. You should, without a doubt, before you even go to film school, get on set, intern and PA, and just indie gig hop around New York City or LA or Atlanta or whatever city you're based out of. Once you decide you wanna be a, a writer director or a creative producer, or, or someone who thinks up cool stuff and puts it on paper and then goes and makes it, you need to be somewhere in an environment where you can do that. Number four, my work was bad. I learned a lot of how to just shoot by shooting. They were all pretty terrible. There, I, I, I was in this box, right, of this is the kind of movie that I make, these are the kind of weird characters that I'm doing, these are all the faults of my technical filmmaking that I'm doing because no one is there pushing me to do any better. And I and I pushed myself to to go to go from comedy to dramas to we did a horror film, you know, like we did sketch comedy, we did uh, dramatic works, uh, you know, like I I made sure I put in the effort to vary all my undergrad projects. You know, if you if I looked at them objectively, they were all kind of the same thing. And and I I really was not growing as an artist. I was plateauing. Was able to identify that in my own work as I just seeing, wow, I'm kind of doing the same things. I'm using the same camera angles. I'm, my characters all want the same thing and, and most of them didn't really want anything. They just kind of existed in their own bubble and nothing dramatically was really happening. And so I knew that I needed to go somewhere where I was gonna do different things where I was gonna learn how to, how to tell different stories by forcing myself to do it, by just pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And I wasn't gonna get that if I didn't go. I knew that if I just got out of school and like, you know, splurged all my money on a very expensive camera package, um, that I would have just kind of made the same types of short films and like done the same types of bottom tier film festivals. Nothing really would have, have moved for me. It's like going to the gym. It's like working out. The more you, you know, if you work out the same way all the time, you're not going to get stronger. You're not going to develop. But if you work out muscles and you do different types of exercises and you do, you do different types of workouts that you've never done before, overall, if you have that coach yelling in your ear, overall, you're going to get better. Number five, it, it was the most simplest thing. It's, I got accepted. And I had no idea, I had no clue that I was going to get accepted, let alone even go. I had professors in undergrad who were telling me that my, my aesthetic tastes and my, my, the genres of movies that I preferred to watch and, and all the big budget Hollywood stuff that I was a fan of was gonna be a detriment to me. The film school professors were gonna see that I loved Marvel and, and the Blues Brothers and Saturday Night Live and these very silly projects and, and say that, oh, this person isn't, isn't the kind of person we want here, or oh, his aesthetic tastes are too mainstream, too Hollywood, and that's not what we teach in cinema, artistic land. The self-doubt, the, the anxiety monster that just like lives in the back of your brain, that's just like, you're not good enough, you're not gonna do it. There was that voice in my head as well. I was working a job at MTV that I just hated, like in the on-air promos department, like the, here's what's coming up next on Teen Wolf. And uh, I got the phone call from one of the professors at Columbia in the office and I had to walk outside and, and I just I just felt, ah, oh, this, this greatest feeling of like, yes. Despite all the negativity, all the, the naysaying of myself and from other people, 
I, I felt validated in a way, and I think it removed this barrier for me. It was less about the, the being good thing and more about the, oh, are you ever gonna get better? Getting that acceptance letter fueled me and, and motivated me to say, you know what? I'm gonna use this opportunity to get better. Because if I say no now, I was never gonna, it was never, it was gonna be done. I would never have it ever again. I had to just do it live and embrace the moment and yes and the situation and just go and do it. You know, and I wouldn't be here right now talking to you guys if I had not gone to film school and moved to New York and, and all of that. Well, that's it guys. Those are my five reasons why I decided to go to film school. Like I said before, please don't treat this as gospel or as me saying you should or should not go. I think that's a very uh, misguided argument because that's really not the point. You know, it like film school is an option. It is a route. It is an opportunity for you to do your thing, but it might not be your thing and that's okay. If you haven't already, please like this video, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be doing this more. If there's a topic you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comment section below. Say, Hey Zach, what do you, what's your, what are your thoughts on this? How do I do this? I want to know what you guys want to know and therefore I can talk about what you want me to talk about. Until next week, keep on doing it live, and I will talk to you all soon.